Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Mushoku Tensei season 2 episode number 7. Alright, the previous episode, um, we finally had a conclusion to the little uh, family uh, squabble that was going on. Um, Rudy and Paul, both of them apologized. Paul apologized first. Paul took the initiative. Rudy understood that, yeah, since dad is like, you know, what can I say? It has taken the courage to actually come and confront me, which I never was able to do in my real world. And I lost a friend because of that. And I know how much strength it takes, how much courage it takes to come and um, apologize to someone, especially if it's a family member. Um, he was like, yeah, Paul is doing a lot better than I ever did. So I at least need to listen to him and hear him out. And then in the end, we see Rudy saying that let's pretend nothing happened. We are good family. We met, we are meeting for the first time now. Let's uh, kind of shake hands, a little, give a little hug and let's just end this whole mess. And yeah everything went well uh they're like you know like they're talking again and they like you know and paul after you know the consolation uh the uh them making up paul helped them to go back to fitoa um uh, or fito it was the name was fito wasn't it yeah um and try to find any more family members and take eris back home and then after that rudy will start searching uh, for um for the, for the mom and the uh, Alivia, I think that was the name, yeah. And yeah, everything is all well and good. And uh, like ha ha like I have to say, like uh, thanks to Geese and that bartender, everything went so well. <laughs> and Geese will also help, as we see in the end. And uh, Geese says that yes, he'll also help trying to find everyone. So yeah, everything is going well. Let's see what this episode brings. Um, if they're able to reach their homeland, this episode it'll probably take one or two episodes. We'll see. But yeah, without further ado, let's get started. This is episode number seven of Mushoku Tensei season two, and I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Thank you to whichever is your preference, and let's get started. All right. So here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Hmm. Oh boy, glad this happened. Like, you know, like they made up. All right. Ooh, rabbit. <laughs> um, all right. Rodriguez. Damn. Is <laughs> it samurai or something? <laughs> okay. Oops, he's gonna get beaten up. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you need more training. <laughs> Gets a little gift. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. <laughs> Damn, we're going to need a lot of those um, statues, those action figures, or figurines. Oh my god, again, a oh yeah, they need to get in a boat. Oops. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, yeah, this is this is too much. This little storm that is going on. Even he's affected. Uh, I think he's fine. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh 
Uh. True. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, kind of. Mm. Oh my god, I hope the, the ship doesn't crash or something. Like sheep crashing? Sorry. Capsize? Oh. Don't talk about food now. <laughs> I'm just going to throw up again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh boy, hopefully. Yeah. Hmm. Gillen is fine, I'm sure of it. Yeah. Like, this is what Rudy is like, you know, like, he always thinks about the positive. There you go. That's why he acted like this in, in front of um, Paul. Well, about that, I doubt they'll meet because Rox is in a completely different direction. Oh, are you here? Think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the same tavern, isn't it? Oh, no. Oh, no, this is... Wait, this horse. Oh yeah, this is one of her party member. Wait, this horse, is it that horse or is it a different horse? The horse who had like a problem with Rudy. Aura. <laughs> yeah i think so that's probably uh living with rudy probably changed him her a lot oh yeah after meeting rudy king class water mage <laughs> no copara. Is this the same horse that we saw with Rudy? I'm unable to recognize him properly. Oh, it is. I think it is. It is. It's the same horse. I was like, is this the same horse? Oh, no. Yeah, spelled. Roxy will. Oh, boy. Ooh. He'll, he'll, she'll
<laughs> Wait, oh yeah, yeah, he said something about in the in the previous episode that Mm -hmm. Horse eating meat. <laughs> uh. He also matured after meeting Rudy. Yeah. Oh, is she back? Oh, nice. She'll he he hear about Rudy from here, I guess. Damn, they're in a completely opposite direction now, Rudy and Roxy. Like, oh boy. Damn, these are like turtle shells. These houses. I never realized that before. What? Do they not? Okay. Hmm. <laughs> oh wow, this place Oh, okay. <clears throat> Is she remembering her past? Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Whoa, this is like a wait, I never realized that she had this power like of Did, did she mention about this before? I can't remember. Oh. I cannot remember at all if they actually mentioned this before or not. I would have remembered if they mentioned this. Anyways, was I so absent minded or something? All right, let's see. Her home, I think. Yep. Okay, there you go. Oh, this is a dad. I, I, for a moment, I forgot. I thought it was a brother or something. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, okay. Talk, talk about that Rudy was there. I don't know. I think she'll probably leave because she's trying to find Rudy or who knows. <laughs> oh, there you go, as I said. Come on, talk about Rudy. She at least needs to know that Rudy is, was here. Oh my god, no, don't say that. Every 20 years, damn. Fifth? Oh boy. It makes us realize the flow of time for them and for humans are so different. Like, they're like, yeah, 50 years, I'll come. <laughs> it's as if like... Hmm. All her stuff, I guess, from her childhood. Yeah. Yep. Oh boy. Always seemed heartbroken. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, so she's able to understand, okay. Okay, there you go, that's... <sighs>
Yeah. Oh, what's happening? What is this? Hitogami again or something? This white. Oh, never mind. I thought Hitogami was. <laughs> What? Oh, this is her house. I was like, what the hell was that? Okay, I really hope they talk about Rudy because she needs to know that he was here and she's he's safe at least Okay, come on Come on Come on Yes, thank you. There you go. All right, recall the name. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> well, at least she knows that they're safe. Yep. Yeah. Who is? Yeah. <laughs> oh, she'll be able to re remember. Like, you know, the spell and the Aries were fighting. You know, sparring. Oh my god, <laughs> she's unconscious. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> the dad is like, what? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, come on now, put two and two together. You've seen them before. Eris and Richard, you've seen them before. <laughs> um, oh great. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay yeah are you going back to okay all right there you go they're going to look for them because she knows that rudy is safe yeah There you go. All right, so everyone's kind of looking for them now. Um, Geese and Paul, Rudy. Rudy's going to start looking after he goes back home. And Roxy as well. Okay, so this portion kind of, I don't know, like is coming into a conclusion, I think. One thing, we've still not seen Sylph, Sylph yet. Like, we don't even know where she is. Like, so maybe we'll get some update update about that in the future episodes. Because, like, the whole thing with, like, Roxy knows that Rudy is safe. Um, Rudy is with Eris. So the only one who's kind of missing in this, like, you know, whole thing is uh, Sylph. Sylphiet. Or maybe we'll get to know something about Zenith and Lilia, where they are. 
Like, I think either of this we're going to see now. Because these two, or maybe Ghislaine. Yeah. Like, the people who we have still not seen, maybe we'll see them in the future episodes. Like, you know, a glimpse of where they are and in what condition they are. Hopefully they are well. I don't have any concern about Ghislaine. Ghislaine can handle herself. Um, I don't have concern about Zenith as well because she is a pretty strong adventurer. The only one I'm concerned about is Lilia and Aisha. Like, I don't. We don't even know if they are together or something. Like, hopefully they were together because Aisha is, you know, like. Uh, okay, there you go. That's the end. Aisha is Lilia's daughter, so I think probably, hopefully, they were together, you know, holding each other's hands or something when this whole catastrophe happened. So that they are together. Like, if Aisha somehow winds up somewhere alone, that'll be a mess. She's a child. Like, that'll be the worst situation ever. Like, just like how Paul was holding on to Norn while they got teleported, um, hopefully Aisha was also holding on to Lilia while they were teleported. Um, or or maybe Zenith. I'm not sure if Zenith was there together. Like if Zenith, Lilia and Aisha were together. Um, I'm sure Lilia would be holding um, Aisha because, you know, she's her daughter. And I'm not sure about Zenith. Because if they were together, they're probably like they wound up together in the same place. But if Zenith, Lilia and Aisha were, you know, like somewhere else completely, the chances are Zenith and Aisha... Uh, uh, Lilia and Aisha are together, but there's a big chance of Zenith being completely isolated because of that because That's that's the whole family like Zenith, Lilia, Aisha, Norn, Paul So Paul is with um, Norn um, Hopefully Aisha is with um, uh, Lilia So either Zenith is all isolated or Zenith is with Aisha and uh, Lilia. These are the two ways this can go. So we'll see. And as I said, if somehow Zenith ends up isolated, I'm sure she'll be able to handle herself, hopefully, because she was an adventurer previously with Paul. But she is a healer. So I don't even know if she's capable of fighting. Uh, that's another thing we have to think about. Yeah, but, but the biggest threat is in, uh, like, you know, the biggest threat, the one who's fe facing the biggest threat is probably, uh, about this whole thing, is probably Aisha and Lilia, because Lilia was not an adventurer, I don't, yeah, she was never an adventurer, I don't think they, they said something about that, she, she was probably a normal person, wasn't she, yeah, so, yeah, they, they are the one who I'm concerned about, oh boy. Hopefully they wound up in a good place, not like in the middle of the demon continent when they're, where, they're, where you need to be, like, you know. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, we'll see. Alright, this episode here, um, we get a little uh, Roxy episode. We get to see how Roxy made up with her family. Now, here's one thing. Um, I, I don't remember if they mentioned anything about this, but I feel like they mentioned this probably in season one. And as I said, like my memory is pretty shaky. <laughs> so I probably forgot about this, but this whole thing of telepathically, uh, like, uh, you know, like listening to everyone and being able to understand what they're feeling. Um, I think this was probably mentioned in season one. I can't remember if it was, but it was not this clearly said. It was probably just kind of mentioned so that probably that's why i don't remember or something but yeah i feel like i've heard this before so like at the beginning i was kind of confused you know like the whole scene with roxy i was like okay so she can understand what others are thinking so like is that why people are afraid of her and turns out that was actually the reason like i can kind of understand the way of their thought process because you know like you wouldn't like your inner feelings to leak out into someone, would you? Like, you know, that's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of scary in a way, embarrassing in a way as well. And you would feel a lot ashamed because in your, you know, like in your heart, there's a lot of things that you never want anyone to hear. Like, you know, so yeah, it is pretty. And I'm, I'm sure that probably, they, like people did not fear her, but people were actually hesitant of hanging out with her because, 
you know like she'll be able to listen to their heart and that's why everyone probably alienated them and the only people who she had a good relationship was her own parents because you know they're, they're her own parents and it was good like you know like the like, um her parents were actually nice people because i've seen a lot of animes where like this this whole thing of being able to understand other people's feelings this is like a thing in a lot of animes i've seen a lot of animes which has the same thing before and more like you know there are a few animes where i've also seen where the parents as well they kind of turn on the kid and because they're basically you know bad people like you know they either fear the child uh, and like you know disown the child or do something in that line like thankfully Roxy's parents were not like that they were actually supportive of this whole situation so yeah all right so okay so this episode um first of all we see we are on a boat rocks rocks uh rudy aries <laughs> rigid and is like in the middle of a storm and we see like they're heading towards uh their homeland and from there we shift into roxy's perspective and see what was happening in um uh, like you know with roxy so first of all we meet this horse whose name is noko or something i forgot now <laughs> At the beginning, I was really unable to, like, you know, properly figure out if this horse was the same horse. <laughs> because, like, like, you know, like, I, I'm unable to recognize horse faces. So, I was kind of thinking, like, like, is this horse the same horse that Rudy made before? Because their personality is completely, op completely opposite. Like, the horse that Rudy made, the horse was, I don't know, completely what can i say <laughs> very rude very selfish very um bad type of a personality that horse had and he was like a bully while in this episode here we see this horse talking to rocks in such a nice manner so i was a little bit confused for a moment i was like oh are they the same or are, are, are these horse different horses but yeah we get a confirmation in the end that it is in fact the same horse that rudy met and <laughs> like damn like <laughs> both roxy and uh, the horse both of them <laughs> were able to change because of rudy oh my god and yeah like as roxy said he also became a lot more nicer compared to her his past self because as roxy said something like yeah in your past you were all like money money you know you were greedy so it's really weird to see you like this so <laughs> <laughs> rocks uh rudy here like, you know like completely changing people <laughs> after meeting them <laughs> this horse he he turned a new leaf completely because obviously he was almost going to die and that time he remembered that he had a family and he realized like yeah i should probably stop doing these type of things uh, i should probably try to be nicer to people because yeah people hold grudges and who knows someday i might find myself stabbed in the back because of some person i pissed off two or three years ago he probably came looking for revenge and suddenly stabbed me and went away like this might happen so he realized that and he started fearing for his own life because of his family because you know like he like the, the problem here is like i'm sure he doesn't care much about his own well-being but he cares about his family's well-being that's why you know like he must have thought that yeah if i die what will happen to my family and that's what's probably stopped him from continuing this whole uh like you know thing of him bullying others and extorting money out of others because he started fearing for um like you know his family's well-being after that yeah good thing <laughs> boy god all right uh, it's nice to see the horse actually giving uh, roxy proper advice because he himself was able to understand um the importance of family after that run in with rudy after rudy actually made him realize that yeah i should probably stop this because i have a family um he was able to realize the importance of that and that's why he says to roxy that you should probably go and check on your parents because you have only one family and it'll probably be too late if you keep dilly-dallying 
So you'll probably regret it in the future. So just go check out on your parents and yeah, so that you don't regret it in the, regret it in the future. And Roxy does go back. Roxy goes back and here we get to see the way she actually perceives everyone. There's this weird, I don't know, like some noises that happens. She sees like this noise that you, weird type of a noise she sees in front of her while interacting with people. Now, I'm still not sure what that noise actually represents. Is, is that like uh, the way the show represents people's inner thoughts? I think so. Because we say, saw the same thing happening when she was talking with uh, her mom and dad. So I think it's probably like that, that, that sound that comes out, you know, that popping sound. I think that's probably uh, the way of the way the show actually shows us how Roxy sees other people's thoughts and how she perceives them to be. So basically she can, she can just understand what other people are thinking. She can kind of feel it, I guess. And like, I, I don't think she's able to realize what they're thinking, like, you know, in their mind It's not that clear, but she's probably, she's probably able to kind of get a feeling of whether it's a positive emotion or a negative emotion or kind of like that, I think, because yeah, I doubt she can clearly make out what they're thinking. I, I don't think it's that clear. It's probably something vague that she feels. I might be wrong though. But yeah. All right. And as I said, like, I don't really remember if they actually mentioned this before. I feel like they have mentioned this. I think like in probably season one, when Roxy was talking with Rudy or something, she probably mentioned this or something. I don't remember at all. And uh, I might have, I probably have just forgotten or they never mentioned this. I don't remember. I'll, I'll probably try to uh, check it out if, like, you know, in season one, I'll go probably and try to skim to season one and see if they actually mentioned this before. I don't remember at all. And with my memory, as I said, I don't have any confidence. I, like, you know, on myself, I probably forgot if they mentioned this before. But anyways, yeah, um, we get a more clear cut confirmation of her actual ability and why she was actually um, alienated by people here, why she never was able to feel at home over here. So, yeah, so the problem here was obviously the villagers because they never actually, they kind of alien, alienated her and she was a child at that time. And obviously it's going to kind of affect her in a, in a bigger way. Now, here's the thing. Um, I think the reason why she left the village was obviously for you know like her own problems because she knew that people aren't able to accept her but I think there is another reason why she actually left the village it's probably because she I'm sure she thought of it like this like if she lives here not only her but her parents her family will also be kind of affected by this because you know like people will look at their family in the same light as well. They're, they'll probably start alienating their family as well, I think. I think she probably thought of something like that. She thought that because I'm here, my parents will also not be able to live a normal life. So as, as she grew up, she probably thought that, yeah, I need to get out of here because this, this place, people, people will keep acting like this. And because of that, my parents will also suffer. Who, like, you know, who, who are the only people who actually supported her. She never, she, she never wanted to probably see them in that way. So that's why I hope most probably she left and she never came back. And now that she comes back, she's able to realize that it's like, yeah, like these type of stuff will keep happening. Like, like she, she's a little bit, she's just has, she has a, uh, what do you call it a special ability so that doesn't mean that she should like you know keep acting this way because she's actually hurting her parents as well as we see the mom starts crying and she realizes that yeah like let me just live here for a moment like here's the thing 
obviously the problem was not here with the parents the problem was with the other people the surrounding people so she was kind of acting cold to her parents i'm sure she realized that after like you know realized her own wrong after looking at the things that they have kept for so long you know her childhood things and she was able to realize that yeah the problem is not with my parents so why am i acting like this in front of them so yeah like after that she was you know she kind of broke down crying and she just you know kind of lived there for not lived but kind of spent the night there and she'll come back surely you know not after 50 years i doubt that a lot sooner hopefully <laughs> and uh, yeah it was good that they made up and the best thing of this episode was roxy was able to know that rudy was here now i'm glad that this did not like you know end in a way where roxy came here but she never got to know that rudy was here like i've seen a lot of anime do this you know like <laughs> like uh, this type of scenario where the person never gets to know what actually happened so that's why i was saying like i really hope that the parents actually talk about Ruri and Ruijet who came here two years ago so yeah that's good that this thing cleared out Roxy knows Rudy is okay Roxy knows that Rudy is capable enough to handle himself Roxy knows that he's so capable that he's being able to befriend a Ruijet as well uh, not a Ruijet what am I even saying a spell <laughs> a spell as well so she knows that she'll be fine so she changed her target to zenith lilia um aisha so that you know like she is able to find them and help rudy in a different manner and that's a co the correct decision so I'm, I'm i'm not sure if she'll be able to realize this that the people she saw sparring in the beach um the spirit and the uh, red-haired girl i'm not sure if she'll be able to realize this but they are actually dead end like i remember the parents actually describing uh, the girl and the spirit i think the parents said something like i was a red-haired girl so it's kind of a difficult situation to actually put two and two together because you know like he he just saw them for a moment while strolling the beach so I'm not sure she'll be able to actually realize who those people are. I doubt she will. But if she does, it's like a bonus, you know, thing that she would be like, oh, like such a shame. We were in the same town. We just missed each other. But yeah, it doesn't matter. Even if she doesn't realize, why would it matter? You know, because as she said, like, I'm sure we'll meet again in the future. So, yeah. Hopefully that happens because we can probably see how <laughs> how different um, Roxy's family's um, you know like uh, what do you call it uh, sense of time is because you know they live a lot longer and she was like ah I'll come back in fifty years so <laughs> I hopefully as she said like you know hopefully we'll meet in the future this happens quicker because Roxy's sense of time is a bit different than the normal humans. So yeah, if they meet after 50 years, <laughs> Rudy will be like an old man and Roxy will be the same, I guess. I'm not even sure how, how much time does it actually even take them to get old. I'll check it out later on, you know, like actually how much time do Roxy's people live, you know, their lifespan. I'll check it out later on, but yeah. So... Mm, that's it guys um i think that was it yeah and they leave on their journey again to find zenith aisha and lilia so yeah we have a lot more people looking so hopefully we'll we are able to get at least some information about them hopefully they're okay they don't get into any kind of a problem i'm not that much concerned about lilia and uh, not lilia sorry zenith and Elaine, but the one I'm concerned about is Lilia and Aisha because yeah, they are normal people. They're not adventurers 
so yeah hopefully everything goes well so that's it guys this was a nice episode a little um like you know family bonding time with roxy and her family like uh, we're getting a lot of family time <laughs> you know like um what was rudy paul now roxy and um her family so yeah that's good so yeah let's see hopefully next episode we'll see something some kind of update about um the people who have not who we have still not seen so yeah anyways that's it guys so thank you guys for watching this was my reaction to uh mushoku tensai season 2 episode number 7 so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below your thoughts about this episode anything you else you want to share i'll definitely check them out and uh, that's it guys so yeah thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next week with another episode of mushoku tensei season 2 until then goodbye and have a nice day